So we haven't been out for about three weeks now, mostly because of health issues. And it went so far that I went and got a COVID-19 nasal swab, which was uh, quite the experience. Probably felt that swab somewhere up in here close to my eye. And a pro tip, don't make that nurse laugh just before she rams that four inch long or five inch long swap up your nose. Try to be funny as usual and and I said, let's just get this over with and stick it up in there. And then she started laughing and I realized laughing and fine motor skills don't really go together. So luckily she was able to, you know, calm down before uh, the important part happened. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's an experience. It wasn't, it didn't hurt, but definitely burns up in there. And they stick it up in one hole, twist the thing around, uh, and then they go up the other uh, uh, hole. So, feel all better this week. Uh, ready to go out. I need to shoot this new rifle of mine. We got a CMMG Banji 200. It's an AR-10 pistol. But you guys can see behind me, uh, we got some overcast. We have this new tropical storm right now uh, brewing up uh, at the coastline. I think it is, it's not quite there yet, but anyways, we see some wind coming through and tomorrow it's supposed to rain and as well as Sunday. Today is Friday, so we're going out to, tonight. Uh, I think Micah can hopefully make it, um, but that would be just Micah and me then tonight. Uh, but I need to get out, so either way, even if Micah doesn't show up, I'll be still out there um, trying to get some hawks tonight. Um, we should be close to uh, corn harvest, so I think in some of the, the counties they already harvested. Uh, I want to see tonight, if close to Rattlesnake Farm, those, those corn fields and those milo fields, what the status is there. Like I said, I haven't been out there now for three weeks or so. so. But overcast is good, uh, the breeze is good too, as long as it doesn't get too windy. That Usually the hawks don't like that as much, but uh, I'm pumped, so let's head out and uh, hopefully by the end of this episode you guys have seen some some hawks, some shots on hawks and depending on our uh, shooting skills, hopefully some dead hawks. Let's see what we can do and I'll see you guys in a little bit. So, funny story, uh, never a dull moment out here, but I was filming as the farmer we were working with here was uh, running the combine in the corn. And <laughs> this Mavic Air 2 has like a bajillion sensors on it. And I noticed it's actually really good at detecting stuff left and right of it. And uh, it's supposed to not crash. Well, I was talking to Dale, uh, one of the farmer's workers out here who's running the tractor and the auger trailer behind him. And uh, <laughs> wasn't paying attention. Next thing I know, I parked this drone in the tree. And then the problem here was really that I couldn't even quite figure out what tree. My friend John lived, lives right next to here. So I drove up there, grabbed the ladder, um, after I was able to find that drone. Luckily this thing has a feature where we can set it to beep and blink. However, it's pretty windy out tonight. And then with the wind and the corn, it's a bunch of noise. And that beep, I mean, guys from DJI, he could have made it just a little louder. I mean, that thing was so faint in that wind. Uh, I was lucky to find it. Yeah, got the letter from John. John helped me because he is probably a good 90 pounds lighter than me. And that letter definitely has seen some better days. And we got the drone down. And then to return the favor, John had a old water trough. I think it's 100 years old. He wanted to get out of the, the field and his truck couldn't quite pull it. Uh, the, 
dirt is pretty loose and and dry. So he had me uh, pull it for him. He also didn't have four wheel drive, so that didn't, didn't help him much. Anyways, got the thing out of the field in front of his house where it needs to go. Now I'm trying to hook up my trailer again here. And yet again, multitasking. Just not a good idea. Just can't get it lined up right. Meanwhile, my car's waiting for me. So I think now I got it. Let's hook this thing up and get into the field because it's getting late. We had some rain coming down earlier. I need to get going here. So, so far the night has been pretty much representative for how all of 2020 went so far. Crashed a drone and a tree. Did all kinds of unplanned things like helping John earlier with that water trough. Uh, then came over, met Micah and it was already pretty dark um, as we were unloading farmer and the farmer's wife pull up and we talked to them we always enjoy talking to them but also something we didn't obviously plan on and that threw us back a few minutes uh, finally get the k m unloaded get everything in there uh, turns out i forgot my backpack because i rearranged the garage everything is clean now backpacks hang nicely on the wall and are not sitting on the ground anymore so now out of sight out of mind so totally forgot to bring the backpack with a uh, spare magazine and uh, all the extra stuff in it. Then, oh, I forgot the sling in the truck, but at least I was able to grab that again. As we drive down here now in this other cornfield where we took down this one row, you know, before it was cut, um, we make our way through that through that field, and then Micah sees uh, with the thermal turret on top, see something to the right. Couldn't quite tell what it is because it was quite uh, quite a ways out. So I'm like, let's just gun it over there, see what we come across, because it was, you know, it was sizable. It wasn't small like a rabbit or something. Head over there, see in the headlights, there's a hog running away from us. Uh, get to the fence line as quick as we can. Hog cross the fence line is right between the cows, but eventually goes away from the cows. Uh, but then it's probably, a, at this point, 200 yards out or something. And then now shooting that CMG, Banji 200 in uh, 308. Uh, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try that. running though. Took three shots. First one missed. Second one must have been a Grace uh, shot or Grace wound because he has, and now here you guys see it, he has something in the front, just a cut wound. And then the third shot was a significant thump. I mean, you could hear it. He kept running uh, across the fence into the old wheat field here and then uh, dropped. So pretty happy with that performance of that Barnes Vortex 150 grain 308. And he is a big dude. Yeah, that's your entry. You can see he was running. He was kind of pouring right on his sideways. And caught him here, right? But he was running. Head he was cordy. running. Uh, yeah, he was angled this way. If you hit him here, went right into his 
No exit though. No exit. But he ran what, 50 yards? Uh, I mean, no, that must have been 100 yards. At least 100 yards. Did he? From where I shot. It's pretty impressive with that 308 doing that. Because uh, 300 blackout and that 7.62 by 40 wouldn't have done that and stopped him at that range. You know, I need a range that that had to be 250 plus, easy. Because I was on 8x with that Trigicon. Yeah, and it I think was, it was uh, 6x or something yeah. like that. When you check the video. Very impressive. Also, Micro sporting his new camo. Look at that. What is that, Cryptek? Cryptek. They're, uh, Damn, I forgot what the... It's not the... Usually have my Highlander. Looks cool. I don't need a photo or something of that CMG and that bore. I owe CMG a bit of material, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna kill some more hogs. See you in a bit. Changing fields, we uh, took that one big boar here, but it's now after 11, we had to take some photos and stuff, but gotta move to that other big wheat field. Now we haven't seen a ton of hogs in that field uh, over the past few months, so I'm a little concerned what we're gonna see tonight, but uh, there's not a ton of activity here right now too, so they might also come out like way late right now, be, uh, it being so hot. But let's head over to the other field and uh, see what we can get over there. So we just pulled in and looks like we have quite a few heat signatures all the way at the end of this field. Maybe eight, eight, nine hundred yards from here out, right before the tree line. We've seen tons of deers in this field, so I'm not sure the those signatures along the tree line this could easily be, easily be some deer, but we'll take the can am in. Wind is perfect in our face right now, and the feet is down here, so it's all about the approach right now. We'll figure it out. Uh, I did like how this run and gun. <laughs> they can't have really work in that, in that bore, so that's always a backup. Most of what we saw closer to the tree line, there was mostly hogs. There were a few deer uh, mixed in, but two bigger groups. And I think when we first came out and I was counting through anywhere between 30 and 50, it's hard to tell because of the elevation in between and piglets and stuff, but a good 30 and maybe up to 50. Uh, problem is now behind the tree line back there, uh, we might have had some new people move in or a bigger family move in or maybe even uh, a new house which they build or something like that. There's more activity back there so we, we do not want to uh, make a ruckus at like 1 a.m. in the morning. Just don't want to be those guys. Um, legally we could have done you know anything and, and shot those hogs obviously keeping um, you know gun safety rules in mind and what you know making sure we know what's behind the target but Still, that is pretty loud, even though using suppressors and whatnot. I mean, I'm shooting that uh, CMMG Banji 200 Mark III, um, which is a 308. Micah, aka Muscles, is shooting his Panzer Shrek, which is the <laughs> 762 uh, by 40 with that LaRue can on it, and it's also not the quietest. So, we just didn't want to do that. So, 
basically we just came from a about an hour an hour stock maybe longer maybe longer than yeah. an hour yeah I mean we, we went 100 yards another 100 yards and once we get close we went in 20 yard increments in the last bit 10 yard increments including waiting for cars to drive by so we have some some background noise so it was a long stock but we, we got pretty close and then the wait started for the train. We have the train tracks pretty close to us. The only chance for us to back there to actually take a shot at these hogs was... And there's another train coming now, of course. Um, right there, train horn. So with that train horn, that was our cover. So we waited for that train to be almost next to us and once the train horn hit closest to us we took three shots i took one and then i jammed so i need to break this uh, banji in or figure out what's going on but i'm jamming up quite a bit once the train came came close the first time the train horn hit all of a sudden those hogs started moving which was the weirdest thing they moved away from the tree line and almost like right by us yeah it was just when the train horn started so there was definitely a correlation between train coming and those hogs all of a sudden moving uh, quite a bit Train comes close, horn, and we shoot. I dropped that boar, and he, you know, he, he rolled basically right away, which was nice. Uh, but then I jammed. Um, I saw another hog further out, uh, and like I said, probably with the train coming by and us timing that, they were somewhat confused because they moved a little bit, but then they stopped. And I saw one broadside try to take another shot, but I was jammed. But then Micah took a shot at that one, I think, and then uh, that dropped too. So. I'm gonna drive up there now, pick up these these hogs. That boar is pretty big. I wanna see if he can break something up in yeah. the tree and, and get it baited because I would be surprised that thing wouldn't be over 250 or something. Even the other boar we shot earlier in the other field was uh, in a 250 pound range. So let's go check him out and uh, see what he weighs. Look at that. 
Ich sag, how tall are you? Huh? How tall are you? 6'4. 6'4, what do you weigh? 270. So that puts that in relation how big that hog is. It might be 275. Makes me look slim. <laughs> it's a big dude. Two hundred and seventy-four point six. Two seventy-four six. What did you say? Two sixty-five. Mhm. Mm Can you Same see? Blood. It's the biggest one. Shot so far. Well. Steyr. Yeah, the one that was Steyr. That one's much bigger. So we're wrapping up. It's almost 4 a.m. And we have three ho hogs in the ground, three boars actually. First big one at the rattlesnake farm wheat field and then those two here one of them being at uh, 275 pounds and i think that's the biggest hog a boar i shot so far well okay that's not true we had this one big boar also uh, in that wheat field next to rattlesnake farm when uh, my neighbor adam was with us and i shot that big one with the steyr unfortunately we didn't weigh him but he was actually bigger than the spore we just had here so maybe then close to 300 but anyways it's late uh, it was fun after three weeks of not getting out this was definitely needed today the CMMG Banji 200 Mark III AR-10 pistol um, is fun to shoot what's not so fun right now is just the jamming up obviously a uh, disadvantage when shooting multiple hogs to figure that out um, might just be break-in period might have to take it to the gunsmith to um, polish those feed ramps maybe a little bit but um, otherwise it's doing good if, what would I change about this rifle well I would probably put a bigger uh, charging handle on it I would look into the trigger a trigger pull is long and um, uh, hard so I'm not sure what kind of poundage that trigger has, but it's um, a little too much. Uh, otherwise, yeah, charging handle and trigger is probably, well, something I noticed the first time I shot it is the recoil. Um, but now with uh, being out today, I didn't even notice anything. No, no issue with the recoil. Um, otherwise, you know, putting an adjustable gas block on there would probably be smart gas it down a little bit um, but yeah otherwise it was it was doing great so it's a it's a good uh, platform uh, obviously folks like to customize so that thing allows you to do that and it's definitely putting those hogs down I mean the first hog I shot the first boar was probably at 250 yards and he dropped um, there was a 
sent a mass shot a little further than the back, maybe even, but he he ran probably 100 yards, 150 after we shot him. But luckily he was just going into the wheat field we usually hunt. And then the other one out here, the big one, 275 pounds, he just dropped. I mean, he, he flipped over, legs up, DRT, so that was a good one. Anyways, Michael is relieving himself back there. Uh, we had a good time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully we get some good footage. Uh, drone crash in the tree, pulling that water trough across John's property. Uh, it was definitely a wild night. It was a wild night, but a good night. It was a good night. Yeah, a big hogs on the ground. I'm I'm jealous of this guy's camo. Yeah, I don't think it went. You know, in the in the sweet field, it's you look, so light. You look it's, pretty dark. It's, yeah, it stands out. I think. Yeah. More. Yeah. Versus a Highlander, but in a dark situation, maybe in shade, I think it works good. Right. So, all right, guys. We see you next time, Texas Yak.